Hi everyone. I've been getting a lot of questions lately from people uh, wanting to know how they can tell that their soap is safe. So people are making their soap, they might be using my recipes or other people's recipes or their own recipes um, and their soap might be showing signs of not being mixed properly or you know, different things happening. So I just want to do a quick video, I'll try and keep it quick, just to show everybody how you can tell you know the signs to look out for that your soap might not be okay and also how you can test it to absolutely make sure so I've got these two batches of soap that I made yesterday I'll be cutting these up later so these have been in the mold for probably about 20 hours now they're quite firm they're getting ready to cut um, the first thing you should look out for is evenness so see how these soaps they're evenly opaque they're nice and smooth there's no oily bits or watery looking bits they've they've firmed up quite well um, you know they, they look like they've set really well that's the first thing you should look out for I do get uh, questions from people who say I've got little oily bits or you know my soap doesn't look quite right Usually, as long as the recipe's okay, that's, that's most usually a sign that the soap hasn't been mixed properly or it hasn't been emulsified properly before it was poured and then you've got some separation that's happened. So that's one thing that could be wrong. It could also be that the soap, what the uh, ingredients weren't measured accurately or there was an issue with the scale. Or, or an issue with the recipe so those things can impact on whether or not your soap is safe obviously it's hard to know unless you know exactly what you've done and you know what's happened but um, if you're so if you're not sure if your soap is okay there are things that you can do to test it to, to see if it is or not because it's, it's a shame to waste um, really good soap that might not look quite right but actually is fine so I'll show you how to do that so yeah Mainly, if your soap looks good, then it possibly is. But here's you, here is how you test it to make sure. So I'll just set those ones aside. Now, there's a couple of ways of doing it that I know of. The most reliable way is to use pH test strips or litmus paper strips. These are test strips. You can buy these really cheaply off eBay. Um, or, you know, I'm not sure where else you can buy them, but if you search pH test strips in um, do an internet search I'm sure you'll come up with some options I bought this three pack of test strips probably about four years ago oh, I think it might have been a four pack and I've had them for that long they you don't you know you only need really like half a strip to test each batch of soap so you have them forever and this three or four pack that it was that I bought they came from China um, They've lasted me for years and they're probably only about $10 or $12 or something like that. So that's a really good investment. There are more high-tech pH testing um, instruments that you can get. But I find that these um, litmus paper strips are reliable enough for, for soap. So I'll demonstrate how you actually use these. These are the best option. And if you're selling your soap, I highly recommend that you actually get these or some other way of testing the pH. Um, if you don't know what pH is, I don't know what the P and the H actually stand for. I can't remember from science class. Um, but basically, it's a way of testing the alkalinity or the acidity of a substance. So um, it's a scale that goes from 1 to 14. You see 1 here is red, 14 is very dark purple colour, and seven around 7 is in the middle. So if something is 7 on the pH scale, it means that it's neutral. So water is 7. Our drinking water is 7. It's neutral. It's not acidic and it's not alkaline. Um, it'll come out as a 7. Um, acidic things like vinegar, you know, all sorts of things that are acidic will, will come out on the, the yellowy orange red side of the scale. And things that are alkaline come out um, have a range between 7 and 14 so they're at the the blue purpley kind of end of the scale um, so soap is alkaline and what we're looking for when we test it is 
for it to be between eight and nine. So seven is neutral. Handmade soap is always somewhere between eight and nine on the pH scale. I have made countless batches of soap over many years now and they've never come out um, anything higher than between eight and nine. So that's what, you, that's what you're looking for. Before I do that though, and I'll give you a demo, demo of how you, how you can use these, I just want to tell you that there is one other way. Um, if you don't have this paper and you've made some soap and you're really desperate to sort of get testing, this is sort of an old fashioned way that you can do it. This is some batter from one of these batches of soap that I made yesterday. It was a bit left over that I just put into a little silicon mold. So you can do what's called the zap test where you take your little um, piece of soap that's, um, you know, leave it for a couple of days and let it fully saponify before you test it because it does take one to two days for that chemical saponification reaction to be complete and you can hold it up to your tongue I'm not going to show you this I'll, I'll do it yeah so I've just held that up to my tongue and if the soap isn't fully saponified which this isn't yet it was only made yesterday you get a bit of a zapping feel on your tongue it's not going to hurt you you just touch it lightly but if you get that zap kind of a feel you know that your soap is probably um, still quite alkaline and it either it's there's something wrong with it if it's if it's still like that after it's been resting for you know a while like after a week or so if it's still like that there's probably something wrong or it's a sign that it hasn't finished saponifying yet so this soap I'm certain will be fine in another day or so but at the moment it's still a bit zappy so you can do a search of the zap test and read a bit more about it um, but that's basically how you do it. You just touch it to your tongue and just feel the sensation. If you don't get a zap from your soap, um, you'll notice you'll you, you'll just notice that you don't get anything except the the taste of soap, which isn't really nice. Um, so if your soap just tastes a bit soapy, but it's not zapping, then it's probably pretty good. But ideally, you will get some pH test strips. So I'm going to demonstrate how I test my soap. I just peel a strip off. I get my soap. Usually um, what I do is I, I cut my bars of soap. I put them in a, a rack somewhere to dry and cure for at least a few weeks before I test them. And then I always test them before I give them away or use them. Um, and what I do is... Um, oh... I just forgot that I forgot to get a, a bar of soap that's been sitting around for a while because these are going to come out on the alkaline side because it was fresh. I'll just come back. Okay, so I'm back. So this is a bar of soap that I made a long time ago, so it's definitely fully saponified. This was the uh, oatmeal honey soap from my hot process soap making video. So yes, yeah, so I cut my soaps, I let them dry and cure and store them for a while before I start using them and before I start using them I test them and this is exactly what I do. So I get some fresh water, just some, some clean water, just have a towel nearby and I just dip my finger in the water, touch it just lightly on the soap and then just put the paper test strip on the surface of the soap. If you have it too wet, it doesn't work very well. And then I hold this up. So you can see that's quite green. And to me, that's probably closer to eight rather than it is to nine. So that's perfect. I know that that soap is as neutral as it's going to get and it's safe to use. So that's that one. Um, now I'll test this, test this one just to show you. Uh, this one that was made yesterday, it is not fully saponified yet. Um, in a couple of days or up to a week, it will test green. But you watch right now because it was only made yesterday. There you go. So it's still, where are we? Um, I'd say it's about a 10 so it's a kind of a bluey color. It's 
getting to a nine. It's got a bit of a green in it, but it's more blue than it is green. So that one is not yet ready to use. And I did, you know, it's only a fresh soap, so you would dry it for a, at least a month or something anyway. But if that soap tested like that after a month, there'd be something wrong with it and I wouldn't use it. But I'm sure that one will be fine. It's just that it was freshly made. So that's that one. Now just to show you, just for, you know, um, interest sake, if you want to test your pH strips but you don't have any fresh soap, you can get something that you know is alkaline. I'm just using some dishwasher powder. Put that on a little plate and then get another strip. Sometimes to save these strips, I'm quite frugal, <laughs> I save everything. I cut them in half and just use half. Um, so I'm just going to get some, actually, I'm going to put some water in here. So this is a little bit of dishwasher powder, which I know is alkaline. I'm adding some water to that. Swish that around. I hope this doesn't hurt my finger. <laughs> Never done this before, it should be all right. And then put that on there. So wow, that one's really alkaline. So that dishwasher powder is about a 10. So it's it's more alkaline than that, than that soap. Yesterday's soap was, so it's quite alkaline. And there you go. And one more thing to show you just for fun. I feel like a science teacher. Okay, this is vinegar. It is in an old witch hazel bottle, but it's vinegar. So I put a little bit of vinegar in here, and we know that vinegar is acidic, so it should come out a different color altogether. So I'm just gonna put a bit on my finger and touch the paper. There we go, so it's come out orange. Um, I reckon that's about a three about a three on the scale. So this paper, these are only cheap. They're not gonna be the most accurate measure, but I've been using these for years and they work pretty consistently. So I think they're good enough. So that is three. So that is definitely on the alkaline side of the pH scale, the vinegar, as it should be. So there you go. There's the little lesson done. I hope you enjoyed that and found that helpful. Get yourself some pH test strips and then you'll be really confident that your soap is fine. Um, you know, if you're just making your soap for yourself, then you can do the zap test, pay extra attention to your recipe, develop your own recipes if you can. I've got a video on that if you wanna have a look. Um, you know, measure everything really accurately, make sure that you're concentrating when you're making your soap, and then your soap will never have any issues. But if it does, at least you can test it. So yeah, if you're making your soap for yourself, then you can just do the zap test, that's fine. But if you are selling your soap or you're giving it away to other people, I highly recommend making absolutely sure and testing your soap to make sure that it comes out as it should, which would be eight to nine on the pH scale. Great, hope that was helpful everyone. Thanks for watching and thanks again for all of your support for my videos. I really love making these videos and I'll just, I'm just gonna keep on going as much as I can with the time that I have. It's been really great. Thanks everyone, bye.